back to Otaku, the show where otaku talk about otaku topics. And today we are talking about, indeed, anime influence on American cartoons. How Japanese animation has come back over to this side of the Pacific and influenced American cartoons in some ways, and perhaps in some ways that it may not have. That you may not have it had. And I have with me today Rising Zan to talk about this topic. How are you doing, Zan? I'm doing good, and I'm excited to be on the show. Let's just get it on. Good to have you. So, we will start at the beginning, which kind of makes sense. Um, you know, anime goes back to, eh, arguably, the 60s. And one of the big uh, uh, you know, things that happened was a lot of the early anime came over here to America. Um, and then that really didn't have too much of a big influence on American animation until, I would say... Uh, probably the, the big kids' cartoons boom of the '80s, mm, when yeah. uh, so much, so many cartoons were made uh, for the American market, and so many were made that they all got uh, subcontracted out to Japan. Mm. So, so many of those shows were actually animated back in Japan. But I don't know. I mean, do you consider that to be anime, Transformers, shows like that? Um. They definitely had, well, they were inspired off of certain things. Like, for example, um, uh, Transformers was clearly designed off of, like, Mecha, like, Macro. Yep. You have a robot that mm -hmm. turns into, like, a humanoid soldier kind of robot, then turns into, like, a jet human hybrid, jet with legs, and then a jet. <laughs> I mean, Transformers, mm -hmm. Starscream, jet that turns into a human. <laughs> I mean, some of the yeah, ideas well, um, uh, were like, oh, what if we took this, this, uh, these style of jets and make that into a character, and we have these whole bunch of other robots that turn into other vehicles? Yeah, and I think a lot of folks don't know that Transformers was based on a set of uh, toys from Japan that were from mm -hmm. various uh, lines, various series that were basically, um, I don't know the, all the, the rights issues, but basically Takara took all of these sort of one-off um, designs that never really went anywhere and tried to sell them in America as I think they call it the Dicron line which mm. completely failed um, because they just dumped toys on the market and so mm. then they got together with Hasbro to say maybe there's some way we could do this and Hasbro said you need a story you need characters you need something for them to watch and so they made Transformers out of that and then you know had the uh, uh, you know the cartoon actually animated mostly back in Japan yeah. Um, and also definitely a big uh, boom was the whole giant robot thing. I mean, that was, yeah. uh, that was like, you know, like futuristic, you know, giant robots, like future. It, you know, it's definitely <laughs> like I've gotten to, became a, one of a, a boy's uh, big fantasies to pilot a giant yeah. robot. Yeah, and let's not forget Robotech. Oh, yeah. I mean, Robotech was certainly a very popular over here in America, and I, I think it primed a lot of folks for the anime style. Yeah. Uh, you know, prove that that could work as a, you know, regular weekday afternoon cartoon series. Mm -hmm. um, so, yes, it's hard to say. I mean, it depends on whether you define anime as just a visual style. Yeah. Because certainly, I was actually, I was re-watching the original Transformers cartoon just like yesterday. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing seeing now how many little you know, anime visual elements are in there in terms of how characters walk or move or someone will point and it just looks like anime. But of course we don't know yeah. that now. Well, we, we didn't know it then. Yeah, yeah. everyone um, uh, definitely feels to have like a different like point on uh, anime. I remember um, uh, Mark, uh, we were talking about this once, uh, talking about like uh, what, what is like Avatar The Last Airbender. What he believes is like if it's made in Japan, it's anime. If it's made and released in Japan, it's anime. If it's made and released in America, it's it's American cartoon. Mm -hmm. And that's just how he feels. Yeah. You know, everyone has a different thing. Like for example, like if it's something like Avatar, the Last Airbender, which yeah. is really popular and big here in America, that everyone's like totally calling uh, that like anime and stuff. It's anime inspired. I call it a merime because it ha it's that right fusion. It has mm -hmm. that that kooky cartoon style of um uh, of uh. American cartoons, like you, if you listen to some of the humor in that, it seems definitely mm -hmm. um, uh, American, very Nickelodeon esque, I would say. But yeah. uh, if you're looking at the art style, you're looking at the um, uh, the beliefs behind it, which are clearly very um, uh, Taoist and very Buddhist, then um, uh, you could say it's anime. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I mean, it was you know, Avatar was made to be anime, anime like, mm-hmm. and that was explicitly one of their one of their um, influences. Um, yeah. So you know, you, you, you have these sort of hybrid theories, um, and again, one of the issues is that is something that was drawn entirely by Japanese staff, but that was released over here. Does mm-hmm. that make it not anime just because it happened to be in, initially released over in this country? I don't know. Well, the thing is, is that um, uh, from what I've seen, that uh, there aren't a whole lot of American animation studios. Like, I'll give you an example that was done by a, Jap- a very big Japanese studio, uh, TMS. Uh, one of the things I, one of the uh, works I know they did was um, uh, or helped do part part of the way was uh, uh, Animaniacs. That was one of the series that they helped work on, mm, yeah. and. Uh, the TMS um, uh, drawing style is actually kind of like the, the big staple that they use a lot for in um, uh, mm. that everyone likes. Like that's the right amount of the balance for Animaniacs. Uh, <laughs> would you say that that's exactly anime inspired? Uh, definitely not. I wouldn't say so because the humor, the it's yeah. completely Americanized. It's done by Japanese mm. um, uh, animation companies. I would not say that it's right. anime though. Exactly. Well, you know, um, yeah. uh, most of the Batman cartoon was animated over in Japan. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't call that anime in any way, shape, or form. You know, certainly not anime. Yeah. Act, Tiny Toons. Um, yeah. The thing is, they just didn't try. Like, like they don't like give it the feel, though. I mean, they do a great yeah. job making it look great and oh, give it that vibrant feel, because you know that's what Japan's good at animation. Um, mm-hmm. But you know, obviously, like once they get the voice actors in, once they get the writers in. Um, also, they, they give them the basic idea of what they want drawn. Uh, that yeah. is what gives the baseline of how the show mm-hmm. is. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, and Batman, is Batman Beyond? Or was the uh, original Batman, Batman the anime series? series. Um, uh, 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 well, all of them were animated in Japan. I know Batman Beyond was more, was, was intended to look more like anime. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, um, it's an interesting question. I mean, it, it, is anime um, purely a technical visual style? Mm. That would kind of imply that you know you tell them to draw something that looks like anime, and then it becomes the anime. But then you get into the whole writing element of it. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't Honestly, think a, uh, the, the a, word anime has yeah. isn't, isn't really described yet. I mean, some people still call uh, the people who are in anime that, that style, they call them anime. They think it's like anime is like a kind of person or like a race of yeah. people. It's laughable. Um, yeah. Which is but yeah, anime... Is that, you know, it, it, it doesn't have a really easily defined word or, or meaning. Yeah. Uh, yeah, know, I mean, honestly, kind of when you see anime used, use, you see it to describe the Japanese... Um, uh, comics, uh, no, no, Japanese animation. Usually, it's mm-hmm. the Japanese animation that comes out in Japan. Uh, yeah. I, I, yeah, because it, 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 it sort of makes sense, but that's what anime is. Like, uh, Avatar clearly has that Japanese um, uh, animation style, uh, mm-hmm. and it even, and not only has a style, but it also has the, um, uh, the, the feel, and also the, the background information, because that's what the creators wanted, because they were, you know, they were anime-inspired back in the day. Uh, yeah. Before they made the show, but uh, but it, at core, it's still like an American show. Um, mm-hmm. It still has those like those American uh, habits, those like style. Yeah. It still has it has this brand new um uh, like different like Asian philosophy to it, this Eastern philosophy, mm-hmm. but it still has stuff that uh, enough to make uh, Westerners feel comfortable. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, which is, I think, one of the reasons why it was so popular is that it got it got that fusion just right. Yeah. Um, certainly. And I think that's one of the. And I think that's and one of the reasons we're having this conversation is that there's this kind of raging debate about, you know, are American cartoons ripping off of anime? Mm. Honestly. Um, well, I'm, I'm uh, uh, honestly, I'm uh, an idea to um, uh, use from that is I'm. Uh, if it ain't broke, um, if um, uh, 
like, if it's good, why not, like, take some of the styles from that? Like, I'm not saying, like, we're ripping. I would not say that we're ripping it off. But um, uh, the thing about anime that I find that's still impressive to this day is that it started with Mobile Suit Gun and Macross. They made cartoons mm-hmm. serious. Uh, we yep. have serious cartoons here in America, but they usually come down to um, uh, dick and cock jokes. Yeah. A.K.A. Yeah. Family yeah. Guy yeah. and those shows. Yep. Exactly. And we we haven't really um, reached that serious border. We've reached the mature border, but not a serious border. Because mm-hmm. honestly, I mean, why would you go serious with cartoons than what you could do with live action? I mean, what, cartoons what are you viable you, because you have you want to have someone bouncing around doing stuff that you can't usually do in normal life. Well, it's like we had for heavy metal. You know, a a quote unquote serious uh, cartoon film made in the eighties, mm-hmm. and it is incredibly juvenile, frankly. You know, it's yeah. like, oh, here's a chance to show a girl naked. Mm. You know, for like five minutes. Because that makes yeah. us mature. Um, <laughs> and there's violence and so forth. And it's kind of like, okay, yeah. You know, it's not a comedy. Um, it's not The Simpsons. It's not the Family Guy and so forth. It's definitely got those elements. But um, part of the problem is we generally don't have people writing the kinds of stories you'll see in The Wire or House or whatever yeah. on a cartoon show. Yeah. Yet we don't get plot. Yep. Uh, occasionally you do get shows with plot, but the thing is there were, uh, <laughs> like some, I don't know, some, car, uh, car, like, I don't know what to call them, I guess animation companies or, what would you call the companies that make the cartoon? Uh, the studio. Studio, Okay. Some, I think some mm-hmm. students get, like, these wrong impressions on um, uh, kids. Like, uh, sometimes they're right, uh, mm-hmm. sometimes maybe a little bit um, uh, too pre-assuming. Like, remember, uh, well, not Darwin, that's bad example. Um, uh, uh, like, with uh, Digimon, for example, uh, they had a mm-hmm. recap pretty much every single created episode. It was, like, <laughs> a short little recap, yeah. but a recap nonetheless. And um, mm-hmm. it was because they think, like, oh, kids aren't going to pay attention to the plot. They're not going to watch every single episode. Um, yeah. and sometimes okay. they're wrong and then they just get tired of the recaps thinking that they're stupid with the kids who actually do watch every single episode uh, and some kids they're right though like for example um, uh, yeah. there's a lot of, this, is, this is back before DVRs were in and recording tapes yeah. just was too expensive mm-hmm. and uh, I and occasionally I, I love Digimon I tried watching every single Sunday morning because yeah I was on Sundays for some reason <laughs> and uh, like I would always sometimes miss an episode because, you know, oh, I, I had a, uh, I had a, uh, me and my family had brunch with grandma or something like that. Mm-hmm. So stuff like that would come up, like other emergencies, or I didn't wake up early enough. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and things like that happen. That, uh, the, the cartoons have is the um, uh, scheduling. You know, yeah. uh, I mean, we've all seen this happen where you know, a series comes out and then they release you know, episode 13, 15, 2, 12, 3, you know, and it's, you're completely, you have no idea what's going on because it's being syndicated. They don't care. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's one of the fundamental problems is that, you know, when you don't have that continuity, it doesn't really make as much sense. And, you know, to be fair, um, a lot of these uh, broadcasters just don't know. You know, so many cartoons are episodic, but it's like, who doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, so that's an education issue, too. Yeah. Um, however, I think as time has been going on, I, was, I think syndication has been less of a problem. Like, I, at least I think it was less of a problem, like, for example, like, uh, well, so again, that still is episodic. I was going to pull up an example of the, the G4, My Little Pony, uh, Generation 4, oh, okay. if you don't know. Uh, it, it's, uh, I've been uh, watching it so far, and it seems they've been going in pretty much in order so far. Good. Yeah. Um... Yeah, syndication could definitely be a problem right there. Um, I know for a fact that um, uh, uh, Japanese um, uh, countries still have a little bit more, I'm not going to say respect, a little bit more um, uh, caring to the order, because obviously, like, because uh, yeah. I, I, I'm, obviously I watch a lot of Japanese anime. I watch all recent stuff from Japan, and mm-hmm. there needs to be an order, because pretty much all, every single show <laughs> I'm watching is plot-driven. I don't know the yeah. single well, episode. Well, broadcasting... Um, it, They've been broadcasting anime you know, in order for decades. You know, yeah. You know, they have the experience to know how important it is. 
Yeah. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah. we just so, don't have that here in America, really. I mean, even Teen Titans, yeah. which was Teen Titans was, was like barely plot driven. Like honestly, there was like so many like little like uh, one shot episodes in there. Uh, there were mm-hmm. some episodes that you know were had you know plot relevance. You know, like oh, they got one one clue closer to getting to finding out who Slade was, or mm-hmm. something like that. Uh, mm-hmm. It was it, it was relatively in order, uh, but still you could kind of see how maybe like uh, some episodes didn't fit with others. Yeah, yeah. It was one of the problems that uh, Robotech had when it came over here. Is that oh, did oh my it? gosh, you know, you really had to follow it, and so you know, um, it, it, it actually got broadcast in order mostly, mm. but they had to kind of do a lot to explain to the broadcasters this is a very plot driven story and you need to do it episodically, and if not, at least repeat frequently, um, because otherwise folks got lost. And I remember, you know, I, I was a kid when Robotech came out, and I remember it was, you know, it came out, and I was like, okay, I know it's happening now, but I come back next week, and something, we're in a completely different uh, plot arc. Um, yeah. And that's partly because just there's, you know, <laughs> those shows move so quickly. Mm. Yeah, they probably had, like, specials on Wednesday and stuff like that that you yeah. never even knew about. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, um, yeah. This is mostly this yeah, is I, kind of another reason why I usually end up watching more anime than I do actual television. Uh, I'm trying to keep mm-hmm. up with the latest Thundercats, though. I, I again, still miss episodes. Because okay. uh, it's DVD, yeah. DVR it's, it's with another, uh, trouble. It's a very interesting example, actually. Where this, that's a show that, you know, was originally distributed exactly for Americans. And this time when they did the reboot, they spent a lot of time saying that this was done by an anime studio. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was done by Madhouse, right? I I think so. Um, yeah. I, I I will check on that real quick. Um, yeah, that's what I remember from yeah, the story did. I think it was Madhouse. I think it was Madhouse. Yeah. Um, let's see here. But, yeah, it... it uh, yes, correct. It, it is Madhouse. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of... That's kind of remarkable, I, I would say, because there's yeah. just... Um, it, I guess it just shows how big anime has become. That that's yeah. a, a a significant thing to tell people that this is actually made by an anime studio. I mean, you can be proud of it now. Yeah, well, certainly. Um, but um, going back to the anime style of uh, of animation or drawing, um, I get the, I think there are actually some advantages to actually having an anime style because honestly, I feel the yeah. anime style works better than uh, some Ameri- the American style because I know I'm a Mm-hmm. We as Americans, we really end up bashing on it a lot. Like, oh, they have big eyes. Oh, they have big heads. You know, oh, mm-hmm. different colored hair. Uh, really, I think that's to the advantage because the eyes uh, portray emotion a lot better. So, um, uh, obviously, the bigger you have it, the easier it is to see that emotion. Mm-hmm. And the Japanese have a lot of, like, very, um, uh, like, I think I've seen pretty much every single kind of, like, Japanese uh, emoticon that they usually have, like, you know, like, black mm-hmm. kind of dazed eyes usually means, like, hypnotized or shocked immensely. Right. Uh, you know, and otherwise than that. And honestly, the Japanese emoticons, you're able to really catch on to them really quickly. If you've never seen them before, you can kind of catch on to what they do, what they mean, what they symbolize. Mm-hmm. While with yeah, some, well, uh... I... Go ahead. No, you're good. Oh, sorry. Uh, you're just like, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, well, um, American style is, you, you get like, you know, you get angry, happy, sad, and uh, everything else usually just falls in between of those three. Uh, you don't get much. That's more, that's more a problem with the studio than with the style itself. Oh. Huh. You know, uh, you know, I've seen plenty of American animated films that have, you know, a tremendous range of emotion. Um, mm-hmm. It's just that you have to really push the animators to do it. Brad Bird actually uh, had a quote where he, somebody asked him, what is the greatest strength of modern American cartooning and what is the greatest weakness? And he said, our greatest strength is our ability to go back and watch all those old, uh, uh, you know, uh, Disney films and all that great animation that was made in the past and you can use DVDs and freeze frame and all that kind of stuff where you can analyze it and that is our greatest weakness mm-hmm. because we copy that 
Ah. You know, and it, 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 how do you put it? Um, I can watch a right? cartoon and say, okay, here's expression 13, followed by reaction 5, followed by, you know, pratfall 2. And, you know, we, we've, we've got this very um, assembly line uh, approach to animation over here. That hmm. um, you, know, you look at a lot of, of, of the more, more recent uh, Disney films where they've really tried to push that to really get some interesting emotion out of characters, and they can do it uh, as long as the animators aren't trying to make it look like Cinderella. Yeah, and I think it's one of the, one of the big problems. Uh, I mean, I love American animation for its ability to do squash and stretch and to do some really interesting stuff, but you just you know uh, there's an over reliance on that. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, um, um, trying to yeah, trying to think of some examples still of this. Mm. Mm, I guess some uh, one. Uh, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I guess one example I really have for a. Uh, it, it's. I think this is more definitely more of an uh, American cartoon that doesn't have too. It, it, I think it has some, but not too much. I'm. Uh, 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 reliance on uh, Japanese animation is uh, Phineas and Ferb, a Disney cartoon. Uh, okay. It's ve- it's highly episodic, uh, and mm-hmm. basically it's like you know it se- it seems that the same joke is going on over and over, but they always do something to change it up every time, uh, and uh, uh, yeah. just so you can't predict it. But um, uh, there, the um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm I'm probably getting off track, aren't I? <laughs> Well, we were, we were talking uh, before the show about Teen Titans um, yeah. and how that was probably, uh, for me, it was the first series where I know a lot of folks really complained about the fact that it had an anime style. Mm. Um, and that was quite controversial, that they were trying to quote-unquote ape the anime style. Um, but it was popular. It worked. And I, I mm. think that says a lot. Um, and I appreciate the fact that from what I've seen of Teen Titans, um, they made it their own. They made it work. You know, it isn't purely the anime style. Fine, you know, choose whatever works for the kind of story you're trying to tell. Yeah. What What's even more shocking is how they decided to end the series, which was um, oh. uh, yeah. What uh, and this is honestly a spoiler. Basically, um, uh, uh, what one of the more comedic characters, the comedic character, Beast Boy, um, uh, runs into the uh, girl that he fell in love with in the second arc with uh, ah. that girl, uh, and basically she. We don't know if um, uh, it's the same girl, if it's a lookalike, or she just wants to forget everything that ever happened. But basically now she's just in high school, uh, going to school, and uh, and B- uh, Beast was like, oh, come on, you have to join us again. And he's like, you know, and she's like, I just, I don't know who you are, but I just don't want to. And, uh, it, it, and that's how the end, end of the series, like, Beast Boy kind of just, like, down on stuff, like, I guess that's it. And then they had the movie, which was much more of a climax. But that's it. that was how the end of the series, though. Interesting. Like, yeah, it was definitely an interesting uh, final episode. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's not your typical uh, and, ending. Yeah, I, I think it's that message right there that is a little bit more of a Japanese style, where um, uh, true. In cartoons, there's in cartoons, there's always like you know the happily ever after, especially in American cartoons. There always should be like mm-hmm. happy ever after. Everyone gets along. Uh, but like in in in, in Japanese in Japanese anime, sometimes usually something bad happened along the way though. Like mm-hmm. people were lost, you know, people were hurt. Uh-huh. Uh, that's usually the cause. While in both American series and cartoons. Uh, like American live action as well. It, there's usually just happily ever after. Um, I think live action actually it's a little more serious, but definitely in cartoons yeah. it's happily ever after, and people magically come back from what we presumed were dead. And the other problem we have here too is comparing different kinds of anime to American cartoons. You know, American cartoons yeah. are aimed at 12 year old boys. Yeah. Um, and you know you can't compare. They're talking in a chat room about Monster on a different. Uh, different topic, but, you know, you know you're not going to get that made in America. Um, yeah. You know, we just don't have that market. Um, mm-hmm. and, and, and indeed, when you look at shonen titles, typically those do have the, you know, the upbeat ending. They'll have some, some, some sad things happening, you know, along the way. Yeah. 
Um, but, they, but they do have that, that thing. So it, it, it is kind of hard, you know. <laughs> School days, not what you're going to yeah, see. Yeah, not going to make it into America ever. Yeah. Um, and again, that just... Actually, this gets back to in the 80s, there was a cartoon called The Pirates of Dark, Dark Water, mm. which was a, an American uh, cartoon series, which is entirely plot-driven. Every episode was a completely different uh, uh, you know, moment in the story, and it kept on moving and moving and moving, fell apart. Just did not mm. do well at all. Yeah, and for whatever reason, I think those kinds of things scared uh, a lot of the, the folks to say, this just doesn't work in America. Yeah. Um, which probably has something that you know, may be true. I mean, we don't like it, but we're a minority. You know, maybe that's the kind of thing that just doesn't work for a lot of American kids. Yeah. That and apparently I'm, uh, like, um, uh, apparently when you reach adulthood, so-called, that I'm, uh, you reach this, some uh, border where, like, oh, like, you, you can't watch cartoons, like, you're too old for it or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, like, just adults just don't watch cartoons. It's like, oh, it's too childish. When, well, they ever watched an anime, then maybe they might be interested in that. <laughs> yeah, very true. All right, I think we have covered the topic pretty well. Anything else that you wanted to uh, cover before we uh, move uh, on? I think I am. Uh, I think I kind of uh, not, didn't do too well with this conversation. Um, <laughs> I don't really have too much to uh, add, but um, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, honestly, I think I'm um, uh, fusing anime and American styles together. It, it's a good thing because honestly, we take some of the benefits yeah. from. Uh, Japanese anime, but also add in our own style, which, you know, not only that, but also maybe kind of in a little small smidgen, uh, gives us a little bit more diversity from uh, the typical Americanization that we're used to. Absolutely. I think it's, it's great that we have all this stuff out here and that we can, we can grow and evolve and change. That's part of life. Yeah. So, cool. All right, so that is it for this episode of Otaku. Uh, as always, thank you, Zan, for joining me. Uh, thank you for being here, and I'll see you guys next time. Awesome. Take care. See you all. Bye-bye. See you again this soon.